Hello, welcome to today's lesson where we are going to be learning about parent graphs and their variations. So if you're look, working in Study Island, this, these topics are called characteristics of graphs. So to go after you watch this video to go get more practice, you can work on the questions under that topic. Um, so first we're going to look at what the parent graph looks like. And the parent graph is just basically the original equation and its graph pared down so there's nothing, no extra numbers in it. And we're going to look at once you start adding numbers back to that original basic equation, how those numbers change it. And that way you'll be able to predict if I say, if I throw this number into the equation, how that will change it. So that's the goal of today's lesson. And don't forget, if I go too fast while you're taking notes, you can always pause. And then you can even pause at the beginning of any question, see what you think the answer is, and see if we get the same answer or not. So I'm excited that you're joining us. And so let's go ahead and look at our first parent graph. Hello. First, we're going to look at how different numbers in different places in the slope-intercept equation change how that line looks. So here I've created some graphs in a free app called GeoDRA. It's through Google, so I mean it's a free app. You can download it on any of your tablets or cell phones. So if you want to play around with it, feel free to do so. It's called GeoGebra. Um, so here I've wrote out the slope-intercept form of a line. Remember, any numbers in front of x is the slope. Any number after x being added or subtracted to the x term is the y-intercept number. So first we're going to look at what happens when you change this number in front of x. So I've list, I have a through g here of different graphs that I have graphed on these x court on this x and y coordinate plane. Our original graph or our parent graph is the vocab word we use is just y equals x. So when that slope is an assumed one and it's black over here. So it's this black line here. That's our original graph. That's the one that we're comparing all the changes to. So when I look at these graphs, I first I pick some numbers. What happens when I make it less than one? What happens when I make it greater than one? What happens when I make it negative? So first, let's look at the two, this B that's in blue and this D that's in pink that make it, to look at what happens when I make the slope a fraction or less than one. Here I made it one half, here I made it three quarters. So I'm gonna go over here and here's my blue graph and it's labeled down here and here's my pink graph and it's labeled down here. So go ahead and pause right now and think about what it is, what happened to these two graphs. All right, so hopefully you've paused. And what happens is they actually get flatter. The as that slope gets smaller, it's going to get flatter and flatter and closer and closer to being a horizontal line. All right, so now let's look at when they stay positive, but I make them greater than one. So that's going to be here. I changed it to three in the purple and in the red, I changed it to two. So they're labeled up here with their equations. And here's my red one and here's my purple one. Remember this black one's the original. So go ahead and think about what it is. What happened to these graphs? Get an idea in your mind. You can pause if you need to. All right, so hopefully you have an idea. Um, so what happens is they actually get steeper. The bigger you make this number, the steeper and closer they're going to get to being a vertical line. And then last but not least, let's look at the two that I made negative, this F and G. I made it a negative five and a negative quarter. That's our orange and green. So here it is labeled on the green. Here it is labeled on the orange. And there's our parent original graph in the black still. So compared to that original parent graph, what happened to the orange and green line? So think about that. Pause if you need to. All right. 
that are orange and green line, they're actually going downhill now. See all these positive lines over here? They're all going uphill. When you make the slope negative, it makes the line go downhill. So make sure you're taking notes. You're going to want to copy this down over here. And then you're also going to want to copy down these notes here. That when the slope is less than 1, it become, the line becomes flatter. When the slope is greater than 1, it becomes steeper. When you have a negative slope, that makes the downhill line. And when you have a positive slope, it makes the uphill line. So if you need to pause so you can copy this down, feel free to do so. Next, we're going to look at what happens when you change this y-intercept number, so this number being added in sub or subtracted at the end. So over here, I've created a new set of graphs, and I have still have my original um, graph in this black. But this time, I've added some numbers to the end, and I've subtracted some numbers to the end. Now remember, this number here is your y-intercept number. So when I have a plus 2 at the end, that means it crosses the y-axis at 2. When I have a minus 2 at the end, as in the purple, it crosses the y-axis at minus 2. When I have a plus 5 in the blue, it's going to cross at positive 5 on the y-axis. Minus 5 at the end, it crosses at a minus 5 on the y-axis. So I've added numbers in B and D, that's my pink and blue line. How does that change the, how does changing that part in the equation change the graph from this black original line? So pause and think about that if you need to. But it actually shifts the graph up. So I've, when I add numbers, it shifts this original graph up. Now let's look at the two subtraction ones. I have a minus 2 in this purple and a minus 5 in the orange. So I have my original graph. When I subtract numbers, how does that change my original graph? So pause and think about that if you need to. But when I'm subtracting numbers, it actually shifts this original graph down. So those are the notes that I'm going to need to know in order to Um, answer the following questions in Study Island. So go ahead and copy those down. We have that the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. And if it's a minus a number, it shifts the line down. If it's plus a number, it shifts the line up. If you need some more time, feel free to pause. And if not, we're going to look at another graph other than our line graph. Here, we're looking at the, an absolute value graph. An absolute value graph is where y equals the absolute value of x. Here, the, my um, app wanted to use function notation. So we have f of x, but that could just be y equals a absolute value graph. So this green one here is my original. As you can see, it looks like a v. It has straight lines, and then it changes direction and makes that nice little corner there. Um, they are all 90 degree angles. And my vertex here is at the origin, 0, 0. So we're going to look first. I have this here. We're going to look at numbers when we add and subtract to x inside the absolute value sign. And that's what we're going to be looking at here. And then our next slide, we're going to look at what happens when you add, change numbers and add and subtract to the end of the absolute value sign, so outside of it. So here in the red, I have g of x, and I added 4 inside the absolute value. And then in the orange, I also added 3 inside the absolute value. So let's look. when I That's my orange and red lines. When I add those numbers, what happens with the original graph? How does that original parent graph change? So pause and think about that if you need to. All right, so hopefully you thought about that. And what happens is it actually shifts the graph to the left that many numbers. So when I had a plus 4, it shifted it to the minus 4 on the x-axis. When I had a plus 3, it shifted it to the minus 3 on the x-axis. So that's a little bit different than what we're used to seeing. 
Let's look at how it changes when I have a minus a number inside that absolute value. So the blue h of x is a minus 8x, or x minus 8. And then my purple x minus 3 is a minus x minus 3, and that one's, here's the graph right here. So go ahead and think about what happens when you subtract the number inside the x, inside the absolute value. How does that change the parent original graph? So go ahead and think about that. Pause if you need to. Right? It actually shifts the graph to the right. So I have a minus 3 for my purple. It shifted the vertex to the plus 3 on the x-axis. I have a minus eight in the blue. It shifted the origin, or it shifted the vertex from the origin to that positive eight. So this one, it actually works a little bit backwards than what we're used to. When it's inside that absolute value symbol, when we add a number, it's gonna shift it left that amount of spaces. When it's a minus a number, it's actually going to shift it right that many numbers from the origin, that many units from the origin. So make sure you go ahead and copy this down. If you need to pause, that's fine. And next we're going to look at what happens when you change this number at the end. So when we add or subtract numbers outside of the absolute value symbols. So here I still have my original parent graph of y equals the absolute value of x, or if you're using function notation, f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. But this time, I've added and subtracted numbers outside of the absolute value. So I'm looking at what happens when you add and subtract in this blank. So the rest of these notes are the same as what we discovered on the last slide, and then we're gonna add a little bit to them. So my red g of x and orange p of x graphs, I've added numbers to the outside. So I've, for my red graph here, I've added five. Mm -hmm. To my orange graph here, I've added two. What happens from the original graph to the orange when I add two? What happens from the original graph to the red when I add five? So go ahead and think about that. Pause if you need to. But when you add numbers, it actually shifts the vertex up that much. So I add 2, it shifts the vertex up 2 from the, on the y-axis. When I added 5, it shifts the vertex up 5 on the y-axis. So now let's look to see if something similar happens when we subtract 5 and when we subtract 3. So my purple graph here, I had subtracted 3. How does that change from the parent graph to the purple? My blue graph, I just subtracted 5. How does that change from the parent graph to the blue graph. Um, so go ahead and think about that. Pause if you need to. All right. It actually, when I subtracted three, it shifted the origin down three. When I subtracted five, it shifted the origin down five. So that's how, when you subtract numbers outside of the absolute value symbol, it's gonna shift the origin, or the vertex down from the origin that many numbers. So our notes are going to say, in shorthand here, the, when you add a number, that's going to shift the vertex up that number. And when you subtract the number, it's going to shift the vertex down that many numbers, that many units. All right, so now that we've gone over about how the line graph and the absolute value graph can be changed a little bit, let's go ahead and look at some examples that you might see in Study Island. In this example, it's asking us what happens to the slope in y-intercept of y equals x when the equation changes to y equals 6x minus 7. Now, if we look at our answers, it's not even asking us if the line gets steeper or flatter or shifts up and down. It's simply asking us what number does the slope change to and what number does the y-intercept change to. Well, my slope number is always in front of x, so slope is 6. So my slope was going to change to 6, so that's B or D. And then my y-intercept is going to change to the minus 7, which is letter B. 
So my answer is B, because my number, my slope number is always in front of x, and my y-intercept is always that number added or subtracted. In this example, we're asked to compare two different graphs. Given the function f of x equals 8x minus 2, and g of x equals 3x minus 2, what is the difference between these two graphs of f of x and g of x? So these are lines. Um, their y-intercepts are the same. The only difference is I have a slope of 8 of f of x and a slope of 3 in g of x. Back to our notes, remember the higher that number is, higher that slope number, the steeper it's going to be. So 8 is bigger than 3, so that means f of x is going to be the steeper line. So letter C, f of x is steeper than the graph of g of x. So C is going to be my answer. Here, this example, Fred graphed two lines, y equals x plus 1 and y equals x minus 2. Which of the following graphs represents the lines Fred graphed? So remember, our number in front of x here is going to be 1. It's an assumed 1. We have a single x there. So we have our slope of 1 and a slope of 1 in both of those equations. Our y-intercept here is a plus 1. And here it's a minus 2. So I'm looking for two graphs that cross at positive 1 and minus 2 on the y-axis. So in W, it crosses at positive 1 and minus 2. But I have an uphill line and a downhill line. My slopes here are both positive, so both of them need to be uphill. So it's not W. Here, it crosses at positive 1 and it crosses at... I'm sorry, it crosses at negative 1 and negative 2. I need positive 1 and negative 2, so it's not x. All right, my next one here, it crosses at positive 1 and negative 2. I have both uphill, so it could be y. Let's go ahead and see if we can roll out z, or if we need to go a little bit deeper. z, they both cross at positive 1. I need a positive 1 and a negative 2, so it can't be z. So it is going to be y, and that makes my answer c. This next equation, it's similar, only this time my y-intercepts stay a positive 3, and my slopes change. Here I have a slope of positive 4 and a slope of positive 1 in my second equation. So since my y-intercepts are 3, I'm looking for two graphs that cross the y-axis at positive 3. So here, I only have one graph that crosses at positive 3, so it can't be w. In x, I only have one graph that crosses at positive 3, so it can't be x. Okay. In w, or I'm sorry, in y, I have 2, so it, can be, it could be y. Let's look at z. In z, I only have 1, so it can't be z. So simply by knowing that both of these cross at, the y, at 3 on the y-axis, gives me the answer of y, which is letter A. In this example, we're looking at how at an absolute value graph, so that's our v graphs. So you're going to want to look back to your notes. It wants to know what happens to the graph of y equals the absolute value of x, so our original parent graph, when the equation changes to y equals the absolute value of x plus 4. So I'm adding 4 inside of the absolute value symbols. Remember, that works a little bit different than we might think. It's going to be a left or right shift since it's inside. And since it's a positive 4, a plus 4, it's going to shift it to the left. So my answer here is going to be C. It shifts it left 4 units. This next question is very similar. We're starting off with our original parent graph, and it wants to know what happens when you add a minus 4 outside the absolute value. So remember, when it's outside the absolute value, it's up or down. And when it's minus, it's going to be down, according to our notes. So the graph shifts down 4 units, so our answer here is going to be B. Okay, this question here is still an absolute value graph, or the V graph, so, but it's worded a little bit different. I have my original parent graph, and it wants to know if that parent graph is shifted 3 units to the left, what would be the equation of the new graph? Well, if we look at our notes, we know that inside the absolute value is where we get the left and right shifts. 
So if we wanted to go left, it's going to be a plus. Remember, it's a little bit backwards than what we normally would think. And once it, and we want it to go three units, so it's going to be a plus three. So my answer here is going to be D. So go ahead and make sure you study your notes a good bit. And once you study those notes, I am sure you're going to do great on these questions in Study Island and on the EOI. So I'm glad that you were here, and I hope you learned something.